Hey guys, we're going to be in Luke chapter uh, 12 tonight, Luke chapter 12, and um, just remember the, all the prayer requests. If you send me some requests, I'll put them out on the group. Um, I know, uh, you know, keep up, uh, uh, keep Jason Yuri lifted up if you don't mind. Um, he'll get his results back next week. He's pretty nervous, and uh, and I mean, I understand his fear there, um, but just pray that, that God give him peace of mind and give him comfort. Um Pray for uh, Logan. He he had a COVID test today. Everything's fine. He's okay. He had a he had a really bad stomach bug. Uh, he had a really high temperature last night. Some of you folks knew about it. I know you prayed. I appreciate your prayers. Uh, pray for uh, Lawrence's family, of course, where he lost his mother. But also pray for uh, Philip, his brother, and uh, pray for Jacob, their their other son. He's uh, uh, he's he's got a pretty bad case of pneumonia. Uh, just keep him lifted up, and of course, uh, just just pray for the rest of their family. Uh, pray for um, Noah. Keep him in your prayers. Keep him lifted up. Uh, pray for Sister Margaret, Sister Francis, uh, uh, Brother Josh, and and those that, that take care of him. Uh, pray for the churches. Pray for the association. And uh, just pray that God's will be done with, with COVID. Pray for the nurses and all that stuff. Uh, doctors, first responders. It's just it's crazy what's going on right now. And uh, just remember all these in your prayers if you don't care. If you have other prayer requests, please send them. But tonight we're going to get into Luke chapter 12. I'm going to pray real quick and then we'll get into it. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. And I just pray, God, that uh, as as I break open your word, that you would help me to, uh, to to teach and bring out things you'd have me to. Lord, I love you and I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, real quickly, I just want to read uh, Luke 12 uh, verses 4 through 7. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Sparrows aren't very big, right? They're just little small fellers, and they just kind of flit around. <laughs> me and Courtney like to watch them hop around in parking lots, you know. Uh, if you sit around long enough, you'll see them. They'll come swooping in, you know, and they're bouncing around, and they're just trying to pick their way through. And the fact that God knows those sparrows, and he knows their value, he knows what they're sold for, he knows uh, when one falls to the ground. As a matter of fact, over in Matthew, uh, that's what it talks about, um, about how that, that even uh, sparrows, if they fall to the earth, that, uh, that that God knows that they fell. And uh, I just want to talk about how that God knows, first of all, circumstances. In verse 4 it says, And I say unto you, my friends, Be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? I watched a video the other day, uh, just a little short internet video. This guy was in a car. They were in the Middle East. It looked like, um, you know, maybe somewhere, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It, it was desert, you know, that there was there was sand everywhere, and, and people were dressed in, you know, common Middle Eastern attire, uh, you know, loose-fitting clothes. And um, this man had a basket, and in that basket, there had to have been uh, 15 or 20 sparrows. And there was another man in a car, and he had his window rolled down, and he had, he he handed the guy a stack of bills, and uh, and and this this old man that had these sparrows in a cage that he was reaching in, he was grabbing sparrows out and handing them to the fella, and then that fella would take that sparrow, and immediately he just let it go. This man was just buying sparrows to set them free, buying these caged birds just to let them go, and and God remembers the sparrow. God remembers whenever uh, th this one bird hits the ground. Uh, I remember growing up on the farm and and you know you would uh you would just see stuff you know you're out working and and you just kind of see nature happen whatever it is and and i remember watching uh these crows chase a hawk and it was one of the craziest things in the world to me that a hawk this big uh bird of prey was run off by a bunch of crows that just kind of make a bunch of racket and, and flop around and i i remember watching these crows fight this hawk off and that hawk didn't fight him he just ran he just left him alone and I'm sure he's after little crow babies or something like that. But but I thought about how God knew that was going on. God knew at that moment that that was happening. Uh, little rabbits, you know, and, and things like that hopping around the field. God understands that. And, and, and 
whenever you understand that God knows that, it's easier to realize that God, first of all, knows your circumstances. Do you realize that God knows where you're at right now? He knows what you're going through right now. He knows your situations. God knows your circumstances. God knows if you're poor. God knows if you don't have the money to pay your bills. God knows if you're having marriage problems. God knows if you're having home problems. God knows if you're having problems with your vehicle. God knows if you're having problems at work. God knows if you're having problems with your family. God knows your circumstances. And that's a very comforting thing that God understands. God knows your circumstances. There's no doubt. There's no question. There's no, uh, you know, back and forth. God knows. God understands. God sees. God, God knows your circumstances. Just as much as he knows those sparrows that was in that cage that that fella, you know, he was selling those sparrows. God knew those sparrows. He knew their circumstances. He knew where they were at. He knew what was going on. Don't ever think that God is just surprised to find you where you're at. Um, I've, I was a kid, you know, growing up and, and every now and then you'd find yourself in situations where you, you know, were in a place you shouldn't be. And it was always great whenever someone that, that you knew you know, or, or that, that you didn't expect to see would catch you in a place you wasn't supposed to be. Uh, I, I've been at work before. I remember one time, uh, I was at work and, uh, for, for whatever reason, I had a stick in my hand or two sticks and there was a bunch of boxes and I was just patting out a beat, nothing big. I uh, just kind of waiting on a fork truck to move something. And, and I was just patting out this little beat on these boxes, you know, kind of a little drum line or something or what I thought sounded like a drum line. And about that time, my boss walked around the corner and caught me beating on this box with these two sticks or these two boxes. And he just kind of looked at me funny and, and went on. And I've seen that stuff happen two or three times. But he, he was surprised to see. He was just as surprised to see me as I was to see him. And, uh, and, and I thought about that and about how God knows our circumstances. And it's a very comforting thing that God, who understands that we go through trial and trauma, that we go through tribulation and trouble, that we go through aggravation and assault, and and fear, and doubt, and, and uh, all the stuff that happens to us in this life, and God knows our circumstance just as well as he knows the circumstance of that sparrow. Not only that, but God knows our current situation. It's not just that God knows the circumstance. God understands, you know, God God sees. I mean, uh, you know, you, you lose a job, and, and God understands that circumstance, but uh, maybe you lost a job six months ago, and you're still dealing with the effects of losing that job. God understands your current situation. It's not just that God sees, oh, hey, you know, they had a bad circumstance this one time, but God not only sees that, God understands and God sees uh, your current situation. God knows that you have uh, other things going on, that it's not just one thing. It said in, in uh, verse uh, verse six, are not five sparrows sold for two farthings and not one of them is forgotten before God. These sparrows, right? God knew they were there. God knew they were they were sold. God knew they'd been captured. God understood that, but their circumstance was still their circumstance even after they were they were bought. Uh, God understood what was going to happen to those sparrows. God knew what was coming for those sparrows. Hey, look, I don't care. You know, f folks deal with things differently. Uh, you you could have had something happen to you whenever you were a child and you've never got over it. God knows your circumstance, your current situation. God knows it. It's not just that he knows that something happened to you. It's that he knows how that affected you on the inside. God knows how that's going through your head. God knows how that's going through your heart. God understands those things. And the reason why that's important is because sometimes as Christians, we're very quick to forget that someone who's gone through some kind of trauma over time, someone who's gone through some issue over time, we're very, we're very quick to forget. And then once we forget that something's happened, then we think, well, they should have moved on by now. They should be okay by now. Uh, honestly, it's impossible to, uh, to, to judge how long it takes people to get over things. Uh, you know, my, my, my dad passed away in December. Right now, I remember growing up and, uh, you know, being in churches on Mother's Day, Father's Day, people would say, if you know, if you've got time to see your mother or father, you better go see him because because, you know, you, you'll never get the chance again. And, you know, one of these days, you know, they're not going to be around and, and you're going to miss them. And and, you know, hearing people say that, you know, that's one thing that they never got over was not having their mother, not having their father. And, and that was an abstract thought to me. But now that I've lost both my mother and my father, I've still got my stepmother and she's she's a blessing. But now that I've lost my mother, my father, and my stepdad, it's true. You you miss out on so much. And it's not just something that happened and I should be over it. 
Well, sometimes that grief is new every day. Sometimes something crosses your mind and it breaks your heart. God knows that current situation. I mean, even this past week with dad, you know, there was there was a minute or two uh, on Sunday that it hit me. You know, I'd like to call dad and talk to him. And then, I, you know, it hit me again. Well, you can't call dad because dad's, you know, dad's passed away. Dad's in heaven. And God understood that situation. I heard a song and it broke my heart a little bit. It made me think of dad. And God understood that current situation. God understands those things as they happen, as they roll up, as they come come around. God understands it. God knows our frame, the Bible says over in Psalm 103, that we are but dust. God gets that. We don't, but God does. I don't understand how Christians can be so heartless sometimes, can be so fickle, can can act like that they have this handle on someone else's emotions, someone else's feelings, whenever they don't even have a handle on their own emotions. God understands and, and God knows our circumstances. God knew the sparrows were caught, right? But not only did he know they were caught, but God knew they were in a cage and they were being sold. God understood their current situation. But I want you to know this, and, and this is where I'm going to go with this. God knows what they're worth. It says in, in verse 6, are not five sparrows sold for two farthings. God knew what the going rate was for a sparrow. God knew that. God knew what the current market value was. He knew the value of those sparrows. So what does that got to do with me? Well, it's very important because the next verse, he says this, but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. See, God knows your, your current situation. If God knew that I had, you know, 35,343 hairs on my head and I lost one today, then God knows that, that it, it dropped by one. Or maybe I grew a new hair today. Maybe I'm reversing hair loss and, and I had one hair sprout out today on my head. God added that one to the tally. God knows the very hairs of my head. I know that's silly, but it's the truth. It says, but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. God knows the current market value for you. God knows how valuable you are for him. I mean, he gave his best for you. God understands that. I preached about this a few weeks ago, the pearl of great price. The thing is, we forget our own value sometimes. And what's said right there is you're of more value than many sparrows. God sees you as being more important than the sparrows that he keeps up with. You know, he knows the very hairs on our heads, but he knows the very feathers on their bodies. God knows those sparrows. God knows where they're at. He knows what they're doing. And I want you to understand that um, when it comes down to it, God knows your worth. Do you? See, we spend a lot of time beating ourselves up and saying, well, you know, uh, I, I didn't do this. God must be mad at me. I didn't do that. God must be mad at me. I didn't do this. God must be mad at me. Uh, I've, I'm over here and I've said this and God must just be furious with me when it comes down to it. Sin is sin and, and God will judge sin and God will punish sin. That's, that's God's business. That's not my business, but we spend a lot of time, I think, beating ourselves up and devaluing ourselves just because we are sinners. God knows we're sinners. That's why we have to have salvation. Why in the world we spend so much time beating ourselves to death over things that happened 30 years ago whenever God not only forgave us for it, but forgot about it. And we let the devil talk us into being worthless again. We're not worthless. God sees value in us. Don't spend the rest of this week walking around acting like you're worthless. Spend the rest of this week walking around like you have value because you do. You have a lot of value with God. God sees you as something that is worth having, that is worth saving, that is worth growing, that is worth nurturing, that is worth protecting. God knows your circumstance. Hey, I know everyone's had issues, right? There are things from your childhood that probably still come back and haunt you. Decisions you made or things you may have said. There's things that I said to my parents. Now that they're gone, I regret saying them. I wish I could take them back, but I can't take them back. God understands that circumstance, but God understands my current situation too. God knows my frame of mind both when when the when trauma happened or when trouble happened, and God understands my frame of mind right now how it affects me moving forward. God knows your current situation. Hey, maybe you're listening to this and you you've just caught some Wi-Fi from somewhere, and maybe you're a sot drunk and you're just you're down and out on your luck. Look, God knows where you're at. God knows what you're doing, and God wants to help you. Maybe you're listening to this and you have a problem with with uh, uh, sexual perversion. 
and you want to quit. You want to get away from it so bad. God knows where you're at and God knows what you're doing. And God wants to help you. Maybe you're listening to this and you have a problem stealing or lying or cheating or fighting or gambling or with drugs, whatever the problem is. Maybe you just have a problem being a Pharisee and you can't help but look down your nose at people. God sees that. God knows your current situation and God's there to help. Why? Because God sees you as worth something. God sees you as worth something. God sees you and he sees your value and he says, I'm going to take care of this one because it has value. I know it's not maybe where it's at right now or or where it should be right now, but I know that it will be one day. He sees your value. You're you're, You're worth more than many sparrows. Sometimes we look at people and we see them and we think, well... Uh, that one ain't much, you know, uh, that one's just trouble. That whole family's been trouble. They're always like that. And, and we see them and we're really quick to cast judgment. We're, we're really quick to cut someone down based on our own opinions. And we forget that God has placed a value on them, a value on them. That's just as high as your value. God has placed on them the the same worth that he placed on you, the same price tag, his son, Jesus Christ. And you know what? Just because someone doesn't agree with you, just because someone doesn't believe like you, just because someone looks differently than you look, is no excuse for us as Christians to spend our time looking down our nose because they're just as worthy in God's eyes as we were. Hey, Christians can backslide. Christians can walk away from God and and they're still gods. God still owns them. God still bought them. God still paid for them. God still loves them. God still looks after them. But they're, they've walked away from God and they're a guilty distance from the Lord. And you know what? They're still worth something to God. Hey, maybe it's a lost person and they're out there and they're dying and they're going to hell. You know what? They're still worth something to God. It's time for us to realize that not only are we worth something, but the world is too. It's time for us as Christians to quit thinking about things as, uh, you know, they're unholy so we don't have to worry about them and look at them in terms of they need the Lord, they need help, they need prayer, they need someone to reach out and offer a kind word. Offer them a kind invitation to a kind church where people take care of each other. Listen, I'm going to tell you, it's time for us to realize that we're worth something, not just us, but everyone, because Jesus came to die for the whole world. Where are you at tonight? Don't you let the devil tell you you don't have worth. And don't you let the devil tell you that that lost person that you know doesn't have worth. Don't you let the devil poke his finger at at someone and puff your chest out and say you're a Christian, you're much better than that. Realize that they're just as worthy of salvation as you are. And that's not at all. That's why it's grace. And because it's grace, you have no boasting rights. Where are you at tonight? God knows your circumstance. God knows your current situation and God knows your value. God knows that that current worth that that you you have. That's what I've got for tonight. We'll uh, we'll meet back, Lord willing, Sunday. We'll have parking lot church and just keeping on the COVID cases. We'll see how things go. I know it's getting worse and worse everywhere. Uh, Y'all just keep us lifted up. Pray for Logan to have like a new case every day at his school. Uh, sometimes two cases a day. So y'all just pray about that and pray for them. I sure appreciate you guys listening tonight and God willing, we'll see you soon.